Today, you need your student edition, pages 54 through 59, and your student activities book, pages 43 and 44. In the last lesson, we started to learn about the needs of plants. So what do plants need to live and grow? Well, they need light and air, water, dirt, and space. Today, we're going to talk about the different parts of plants that God designed to work together so that they can live and grow. Now look at these words. Survive, roots, stem, leaves, and flower. Turn in your book to page 54 and as we read, find out what God designed plants to do. Plants do not all look the same. They are many sizes and shapes. They are many different colors. But most plants have the same parts. Most plants have roots, stems, and leaves. Some plants also have flowers. God designed plants to survive and grow. To survive means to stay alive. There's a vocabulary word and it is survive. Survive means to stay alive. Plants use all their parts to survive and grow. All plants don't look the same. How can plants be different? Well, by their sizes, their shapes, and their colors. Here is a very big plant, and here is a very small plant. Do all plants, do all these plants have the same shape? No. And are all plants the same color? No. What is the same about most plants? Well, most plants have the same parts, roots, stems, and leaves. And what plant part do some plants have? They have flowers. What did God design plants to do? To survive and grow, and survive means to stay alive. What does a plant do when it grows? What do you do when you grow? Get bigger. Now let's watch a plant start to grow from a seed. What we just saw was a plant growing very quickly. Now, a plant doesn't really grow that quickly, but you could see changes as the plant grew, and it definitely got bigger. Now, what do all plants use to survive or stay alive and grow? All of their parts. Now, if one part of the plant is missing, the plant can't survive and grow. Now, here is a plant with flowers. The plant parts are the roots, the stems, the leaves, and the flowers. Now which part of the plant is in the dirt? It's the roots. Put your finger on a stem and follow a stem up to a flower. This plant has flowers but not all plants have flowers. Now let's look at some parts of the plant on a couple of my plants. Here, I have a plant where you can see the very, very fine roots. And then there are the stems and the beautiful leaves. Now this plant doesn't have flowers, but I have a plant that does have beautiful red flowers. Now it's time for Quick Check. 
What are the four parts of a plant? Flowers, leaves, stems, and roots. This time as we read, I want you to find out what moves up the stem from the roots. Roots hold the plant in the ground and take in water. There is a new word, and it is the word roots. Now the roots are the part of a plant that holds the plant in the ground and takes in water. Roots are under the ground. The roots take in water from the ground. Roots help the plant survive and grow. So the plant roots are in the ground and God designed the roots to get water from the ground. How do you think the water gets in the ground? Did you say rain? Yes, that's right. Rain and any other water from the sky, like snow and even sleet and hail, soaks into the ground. Also remember that one of a plant's needs is space and plant roots need space to take in the water that the plant needs to survive and grow. Now, what is this boy holding? He is holding some carrots. Do you know what part of the carrot is the root? It's the orange part, the part that we eat. Now, other roots that people eat besides carrots are radishes, turnips, and beets. Now, look at the next page. The stem holds up the plant. Here's a new vocabulary word, and it is stem. The stem is the part of the plant that holds up the plant and moves water from the roots to the other parts of the plant. Water from the roots moves up the stem. A tree has a large stem. A dandelion has a small stem. The stem helps the plant survive and grow. So, the stem holds up the plant. And what moves up the stem from the roots? It's water. What plant has a very large stem? Well, a tree has a very large stem. The trunk is the main stem of a tree, but the branches are a branching part of the stem that supports the twigs and the leaves. Now, what is a very small stem? A dandelion has a very small stem. Now notice the trunk or the stem of the tree and also the stem of the dandelion. How does the stem help a plant survive and grow? Well, it moves the water from the roots to all parts of the plant. Now this child is eating celery. It's a stem. Can you think of any other stems that people eat besides celery? Well, have you ever eaten asparagus? That's a stem and rhubarb is a stem. Now, I've got some celery. I just told you that this piece of celery is a stem. Now, you can see the leaves at the top of it. And have you ever noticed when you're eating celery that there are some strings? Those strings are actually little tubes. And water for the plant moves up from the roots, up through these little tubes in the stem. Now it's time for Quick Check. What is the job of the roots? Hold the plant in the ground and take in water. Now we're going to look at the next page to find out what leaves use to make food for the plant. Plants make their own food. Leaves make food for the plant. There is our vocabulary word and it is leaves. Leaves make food for the plant. 
Leaves use light, air, and water to make food. Leaves help the plant survive and grow. Now we've got plants with leaves on them here. Now what do leaves use to make food for the plant? Light, air, and water. Plants get the water they need when the roots bring up the water from the ground, up the stem to the leaves. Remember that God made the plants on the third day of creation. This is something only God could do. God is the engineer who designed all the parts of the plants to work together so that plants can live and grow. Now on page 58, you see some different kind of leaves here, and they don't all look the same, do they? There is cedar, oak, palm, and something called caladium. Now, what leaves do people eat? Right, they eat lettuce leaves. These other leaves are from plants and trees, but they're not good to eat. What are some other leaves that we might eat? Well, there's cabbage, kale, and spinach. Look at page 59. Many plants have flowers. The flower makes seeds. There's a vocabulary word, and it is flower. The flower is the part of the plant that makes seeds. A new plant will grow from a seed. Flowers also add color and beauty to plants. God designed all parts of the plant. God designed the plant parts to work together. Plants survive and grow because the roots, stem, leaves, and flowers work together. Many plants have flowers. What do flowers make for plants? They make seeds. Now, the seeds in this plant grow in the dark center of the sunflower. And here are some sunflower seeds. What grows from a seed? A new plant. And flowers also add color and beauty. Now this girl is holding a cauliflower. Have you ever seen or eaten cauliflower before? Well, it's a vegetable that we eat, but it's also considered a flower. And broccoli and artichokes are also flowers that we eat. God designed all the parts of a plant, the roots, the stem, the leaves, and the flowers to work together. How are they designed to survive and grow? Remember that the roots take in the water from the ground, the stem moves the water up from the roots to the other parts of the plant, the leaves make food for the plant, and flowers make seeds so there will be more plants. Now let's listen to a song about what we just learned. Now it's time for Quick Check. What is the flower's job? To make seeds and add color and beauty. I want you to look at your activities pages right now.
The top of the page says it is a study guide, and the first part of the page says to draw lines to match each name to the part of the plant. So look at the part of the plant and draw a line to the correct part. The next part says to complete each definition. You have some words to choose from. That's for 5 through 10. 11, 12, and 13, you are going to circle the living things. On page 44, you're going to circle two pictures that show ways people use plants. And then for 17, 18, 19, and 20, if you need someone to help you read those, I want you to do that, get them to read it with you, read it, and then you decide which of these two answers it is, and circle the correct answer. And then the write about it question. It says, Mrs. Smith asked the students to read Genesis 3, 17 through 18. The Bible says that plants changed when Adam sinned. And write about, before Adam sinned, all plants were perfect. After Adam sinned, there are now. And you complete that sentence. All right, we're done for today, and here is your assignment. I want you to complete student activities pages 43 and 44.